Welcome back to the VST channel Valence Peace Tech here. This on your screen is an organized mess. This in my hand is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra running the latest AVCJ software with the Android security patch level from April the 1st. And the question is, is this here as well an organized mess? Welcome to my full April firmware review on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, the Exynos 2100 version. I appreciate your support. So before we start, just subscribe to the channel if you did not already. Hit the like because I'm sure you're gonna like this video and enjoy the video. First interesting thing about this update is that security updates are usually not that big. Samsung didn't really exactly launch the S22 series really smooth enough and it has been plagued by a lot of issues and scandals in this I think now two months since the launch. This update here is almost 1400 megabytes and although in some countries there are some change logs, but there are some new things, keep watching and I'll show them to you. Interestingly enough, we don't know what else is there. A lot of peeps anticipate some performance improvements. So after scrolling the update size, which is really enormous, I have installed it last night wanted to give the phone a chance to recover. I also optimized my application using here, guys, the Galaxy App Booster, right? And all this day I'm doing some tests for you, benchmarking, gameplay, and etc., which I'm gonna share with you in this video. Let's start first with some version checking. When you're at home, this is probably the major software that really drives the phone, at least this is what we see on the screen. The previous March version had the 110137. Right now, let's just go inside and see what we have. I'm gonna go to settings, I'm gonna go to about home screen. Right now we have 10163, so there is indeed a new version. The camera version 0150 was the one for March. Now let's just go inside this camera and see what we're gonna get here. I'm gonna go to the cockwheel, I'm gonna go to about camera, oh, 0162. So we can confirm that at least the camera and the One UI Home were updated. Well, they're absolutely the same. Samsung is not ideally known for having the most fluid animations and yeah, let me just show you guys. For example, this is the animation of going to the home screen settings. See, it is not perfect. Now I can do it 10 times and it may never be perfect, but then at some point, somehow the phone decides and it starts to behave better, okay? Things like this, glitches like this are very, very annoying. Let's just check what happens when I just navigate around. I'm gonna go now to my Google feed, uh, okay, yes. Scrolling is, I think it's okay, but navigation sometimes is a bit rocky. Okay, let me just navigate also to the other menus there. Let's display also the volume rocker. It does feel nice, no big stutters. Okay, I'm also going to pull my notifications. This animation on my S21 Ultra was really driving me crazy because it was really lagging so much. Now here with the One UI 4.1 and the Android 12 and the S22 Ultra, at least here, we don't have big problems. It pretty much seems to be okay. But let me just show you this part that really annoys me. Mm, yes, here we have it again, okay. Yeah, one more time. I'm gonna do this 10 more times until I really see that it's gonna get fluid, right? You know, sometimes it does get fluid, sometimes not really. But there is also something else I notice. The moment that really drives me the most crazy is when I do a screenshot, okay? Boom, screenshot is okay. Then I just open one of my social medias. I go inside, I try to attach it. And yeah, you see, this really is driving me crazy. I'm gonna do this one more time. So I'm just doing, let's say, a random screenshot screenshot taken okay and then i'm opening telegram right and then i'm gonna go into one of my chats and then okay this time it was a bit better but i can understand why the people are really disappointed this really has to be fixed once and for all so samsung there are really no excuses and usually i'm not that picky because you know for all these years i use so many devices and i pretty much see a lot of things but it is not acceptable and I do really believe that Samsung should somehow fix this once and for all. By the way, I'm using 120 Hz and also WQHD, but I was also testing FHD, I was testing 60 Hz refresh rates, pretty much the same. Now there are some tricks that can help you get this under control. When you go inside your developer options, you can adjust the window animation scale transition and the animator duration scale from 1x to 
.5x and some people claim this works faster right I know it's like this but I don't want to get rid of this I really like the stock animations and I want them to be absolutely fluid all right let's do some more animation testing let's open some folders all right let's open here the Viber let's open here the Messenger let's open here Spotify for example Spotify sometimes doesn't really start that fast but overall it's quite okay mixed cloud right animation wise not a problem at all you know I can also do like this and like this it will behave probably okay in most of the times I can also show you my applications and see just by doing this boom there is this what I call micro stutter sometimes when I'm not in the mood it can drive me crazy other times like today I don't really care I know it's there is it acceptable no it's not does this also happen on Snapdragon phones? Yes, of course it does. I have a bunch of Samsung Snapdragon phones. This whole Snapdragon Exynos discussion is getting really too tired for me right now, guys. So I don't want to go there, but please know that my unit is Exynos 2200. Gonna go again and show you the quick settings. And by doing this, yeah, we also saw it. There was this lag. So clearly it's not perfect. It's not ideal. Let's also check the recent menu. Doing it like this. Okay, see all my applications. Right. I have some tests prepared for you. I promise you guys some very interesting result. So overall, it still feels like the old S22 Ultra Galaxy phone, which is actually weird because that's a new phone two months. There are not really a lot of new things that you can just see and touch with a hand, but I noticed something, guys. Let me show you something. Uh, I'm inside now my camera, all right? And if I want to, let's say, do a close-up like this, I'm gonna get here this focus enhancer mode, all right? It's there. When I just press it off, okay, it's going to be off. And then, of course, I can use my flashlight. So I can just do a photo with a flashlight. Now, let's say I wanna use the focus enhancer one more time. Let me just show you. See? Now, I get the focus enhancer, but also the flashlight and this for sure was not working in the previous version. So that's at least a new functionality. Also, from what I read on some of the other change logs for the ROMs release of the other countries, they implemented some changes. Apparently, when you do shoot UHD 30 FPS or 60 FPS in the dark scenarios. Now, guys, I wanna show you just something. I'm gonna go to UHD 60, I can just do it, and show you I never had really a problem with stabilization, right? I know people do some tests like this or they juggle it like this, and people, you know, always say that the Exynos is doing a very bad job and that the stabilization is very poor compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But honestly, I have a phone in my hands and I am satisfied. I, I really think that the stabilization here works quite nice. And I just think that some people really have bad luck or probably even bad devices. So guys, those are like the two improvements that you can just feel and see with your hands. So they put this option to use the flashlight with the focus enhancer and also optimize a bit 4k 60 fps when using low light scenarios and i want to touch a bit on the benchmarks because i think that's very interesting and as promised guys i have a lot of things to show you so the moment i installed the phone i put it to rest this morning i only started to do some tests the very first test that i did in the morning got me 664 single core score which is really annoying i mean this is really so so slow if i just show you guys usually also the s21 ultra was getting more than 1000 so this was here was very bad okay so this was like the first result okay and then i just gave the phone one hour to relax i did a second test and the second test was also very bad see here also the multi-core score was below 3000 and usually this phone can do something like 3300 even 3500 so i was like just scratching my head i gave the phone one more hour then i did another test and this time i would say i got like okay results where the single core score was above 1100 and the multi-core score was above 3200 and then I did another test just four minutes after this one and I was pretty much getting the same constant results. But just pay attention, guys. This is the ever first benchmark gang bench that I did on this phone and it got me a multi-core score of almost 3,600. I never got this result again because between February and March, Samsung implemented some updates and I just think that they went more for sustained performance. So they're sacrificing the peak performance to get your phone going on optimal performance for the longer run. And I think I can prove it with the next result from 3D Mark. These are now all my 3D Mark tests right now. On the 25th of February, I did my first ever wildlife test that got me more than 7,000 points. And then the wildlife extreme that got me almost 2,000. Then see guys, you know, 25th of February, right? Then I did another one, it got me almost close like 7,000. So I was pretty much getting the same results. Now, 
later today, see, the wildlife got me only 5,000. So from 7,000 to 5,000. And guys, the wildlife extreme, yeah, almost like, almost pretty much almost like the same results. But I wanted to share something else that I find very interesting. The wildlife extreme stress test, guys, because I did that for the first time. Stability is 50%. And just pay attention to this graphic. So what this test is pretty much doing, it will run the wildlife extreme test for 20 loops. And it will measure all the results. And see here, it started quite okay. Then here we got a performance drop. Then here the fall managed to recover. So it pretty much get the same performance overall. And I know from other reviews that actually the Exynos 2200 is even dealing better with this compared to the Snapdragon HN1 version. So that the Exynos 2200 is able to handle heat better and kind of gives you this sustained performance. Now it's not going to be of course the optimal one and we have these bad drops here but it's overall very stable. I decided to just do one more wildlife extreme and you can just see it was really not so good even compared to my score that I got like a few hours ago. But guys I have some good news for you. These results does not mean that you can experience bad behavior. If you didn't really watch my previous videos, then I can show you the Call of Duty Mobile as well the Asphalt 9 now run on almost all the highest settings like max FPS and max graphics. I also tested the PUBG in this morning. It is still not yet optimized and I also did test some Genshin Impact. So what I'm going to do in this video as part of this test, I'm going to run the Genshin so that you can just see how it all works. And also I'm going to stop the game optimizing service from like the standard way to do so. Honestly, I don't think this matters, but I'm just going to do this for the test. All right, so I'm going to click on more. I'm going to click on game booster. I'm going to click on laps and alternate game performance management. By toggling this, we will just stop and then, guys, I'm going to run the Genshin Impact. I do also use the priority mode, okay? And by the way, I do have also my cover on the phone, which means the phone is not really uh, being able to uh, cool in the best way. So probably I'll just remove it to just give the phone a better chance and just guys give you the experience that I have. I will not show any FPS, no GPU watch, nothing. I just want you to see how it is. Again, this is really part of my firmware monthly review, so I don't want to focus specifically on gaming. And we all know that the Genshin Impact is not really well optimized. So honestly, I've seen enough, but I just want to share because I know it's important for most of you. Play this game on a PC, play this game on a PlayStation 5, or even buy, you know, one of the low-end Snapdragon phones. They'll probably even run it better than the current 8th Gen 1 and even the Exynos 2200. But without any further ado, let's do some Genshin gameplay. I'm gonna up the sound a bit. Alright, yep. Okay, guys. I'm just giving you the real picture again. I don't want to suggest something. I don't want to show any FPS. I just want to see for yourself how it looks like. Do you like it? Do you think it's playable? Do you think it's it's very worse? I've seen so many and so mixed reviews. Some people say they cannot do 20 FPS. Some people say they cannot even play the games. It's really very strange. I, I just have a feeling that this game is really not absolutely not optimized for at least the Exynos 2200, but I also see people with the 8th Gen 1 really struggling to get some nice results. So honestly, I don't know what to think, guys. I'm just gonna play it for a bit and show you guys what I do experience. I told you, if you wanna check some nice graphics, then Call of Duty Mobile and even Asphalt 9 are gonna get you probably the best from this device at the moment. All right, let's do two or two minutes gameplay of Genshin Impact for your viewing pleasure. By the way, you know, with the GOS turn off, the phone really gets very hot in my hand. But overall, guys, and honestly, I I'm not really like the typical Genshin Impact gamer. 
I would say this is okay for me. Now, I really would love to hear what you think down below in the comments. Just please let me know. Do you think this performance is really worse? Oh, and by the way, I did not tell you, but I'm running here everything on the max settings. So max FPS, max high graphics and everything like this. So please let me know in the comments down below. Do you think this is really horrible? Can you live with this? Or you're very mad at Samsung and you want to throw the phone away and you want to buy an iPhone or something like that. Okay, but let's just do a bit more. I really enjoy it. Like, the, the thing I enjoy in Jensen is just walk around and practically just... It gives me this Zelda feeling all the time. Alright, see? See, it is what it is, guys. Yep. I can really feel the heat in my hand. Yes, 44 degrees. So, I'm not sure if GOS off does actually do something, but it seems that Genshin is not really so bad compared specifically in the beginning. And now with the phone properly heated, I'm just gonna do again this, yes, this is probably the most annoying thing I see here. I will never stop doing this in my tests. And yes, now that I play Genshin and I think the phone really drain off its powers, this is really now awful, I have to tell you, I don't like this. And now I'm gonna show you the other typical scenario. I do not screenshot, okay? Oh my god, even this one lagged. Then I'm gonna go inside my telegram, all right, and I'm gonna try to attach it. Okay, now this time works. All right, see, now the phone recover. This is something that I will never get with Samsung. I'm not sure how they do it, but sometimes it works, sometimes not really, and I just feel that they need so less to fix it. But you know, I'm not really in Samsung's head, and probably it's a bit more complex than what we are thinking. But I have the feeling that Samsung are trying to push this into the right direction. And now, let's try to do also a camera test. I do realize the phone is heated right now, so it's gonna be probably awful, but I still wanna do it. So let's open the camera. All right, not so bad. Okay, opening, closing, opening, closing. All right, not so bad, by the way. This was really problematic in the S21 Ultra after some of the updates. Now let's go behind the modes, more, all right, video, photo, portrait, photo. Okay, let's change lenses. Okay, camera opening and closing. I think this now is at least so for me. So I'll not really make a big drama over it. But, oops, even the flashlight. This here, right, this I think needs fixing and the overall UI to make it a bit more smoother, right? Because this is really probably the best display in a phone. The best brightness, 120 Hz, so it really has to be perfect. It's not, I mean, we have to tell the truth, it's not, but I think it's getting better. The problem is that you pay the money up front and you're still not buying a perfect device. But guys, this is really what it is. So after using this phone now heavily for 30 minutes, I can feel it almost like burning here. So it's very, very hot, right? Which probably means that the GOS off is still doing something. I will advise you not to mess up with this because that's pretty much what the GOS is doing. It's not only just there to cripple your performance. It is about thermal management. So if you want to use your phone for a longer period of time so that the phone serves you good, probably, you know, don't mess up with this. Another tip that I have, every time, guys, you update your Samsung firmware, make sure that you install the Good Guardians and also go inside the Galaxy App Booster, boost all of your application. And if you want to play with the performance the way I did, go inside the Thermal Guardian and then just set the thermal threshold to the max here. This probably is one of the reasons why my phone will allow a bit higher temperature and of course at the expense of a battery. So, so far, no crazy new things besides the fact that it is 1st of April and we have the April patch. We don't know all the things that Samsung included there. I think that in the next few days or probably weeks, people will going to uh, unravel them. But I wanted to give you guys the review as to what the software is right now for me. I really hope and appreciate that you like the video. If that's the case, just hit the like button, guys. Subscribe to the channel and I'll meet you in one of my next episodes. VST over and bye.